Yo, what is good, Dev guys? Welcome back. So in the last video, we set up our game states inside of our game mode. Now we're going to continue setting up the logic that surrounds that game state. So different things that will happen once our state hits a certain point. Uh, so go ahead and open up your battery spawner base class. And we need to go ahead and create a function here that allows us to toggle on and off the, the spawning functionality of the spawner. So I'm just going to put it here in a public section. Uh, I'll put it down here. And this is going to be a void function here. So it's going to be void set spawner active. And this will take in a bucket spell. This will take in a Boolean that is B is active. And what this will do here is instead of just automatically starting with our spawner active, we're going to actually set the spawner active from our game mode. So I'm going to go ahead and create an implementation of this function here. And what we want to do is check if B is active. Then we want to run the code that we did here and begin play. We want to do this code here once our spawner is set to active. And then if it's not, or if we toggle the spawner off, we want to go ahead and clear that timer. And clearing the timer, we'll just go ahead and stop the timer from running. So I'm going to get world, get timer manager, and clear timer. And then you have to pass it the timer handle, which is our spawn spawn timer handle. And that is pretty much all we need to set up here. I will go back here and let's go ahead and make this a U function. Um, blueprint callable and give it a category of spawner. It's just, a, just in case we need to call this from blueprint. I'll save that. And we're pretty much done with this class here. So I'm going to go ahead and close it up. But inside the game mode, we need to go ahead and link those or get ready to link those two things together. So we need a few things here. We need a private variable to store our spawn actor into so that the game mode can actually access the spawner. So. Let's go ahead and create a private T array. And this T array is going to hold pointers to our spawn base class. And what is it called? Battery spawner base. So it's a battery spawner base. And it's going to be a pointer. Uh oh, that class doesn't exist. It's because I spelled it wrong. Battery spawner base. Just make sure that class exists. I'll click into it, or control click into it. Um, and this is gonna be our active, yeah, let's call this active spawners in the level. Okay. So what we wanna do here is fill this with all of the actors that are currently in the in the level that are battery spawners. So the way that we're going to do this is a little bit different from the way that they did it inside of the original version of this tutorial. But we're going to come here to begin play. We want to do this and begin play. OK, so what we want to do is go ahead and create a for loop. And this will be a little bit different. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and clear this out. And this is actually going to be a new type. It's called T actor iterator. And this takes in a type. Um, a lot of times when you see these brackets, it just means that it's it you have to fill it with a type and the actor type that we want is the the battery spawner base. So let's go ahead and pass in our a battery spawner base. And the the name of this is going to be IT for iterator and it's going to fill its value from the world. So we're going to get the value from the world. It's giving us a problem here. So let's just include, we need to include 
engineutils.h. So hash include engineutils.h if you don't have rider. So that'll fix that error. So th this is kind of confusing. And I understand why they did it the way they did inside of the original course, because explaining this is kind of confusing. But basically what this T actor iterator does is it's the exact same of get all objects of class or get find all objects of class. That's what this iterator does. It iterates over every actor in the class in the world and it compare it like lines it up and sees if it's a battery base, a battery spawner base. If it does, it'll it'll return with a value. If it doesn't, it will it will return without a value. So we want to see if it right here. And we want to go ahead and just say iterate over it here to get rid of this. And we actually want to pre iterate here. So plus plus it. And now what we can do is take our T array and fill it with a, a reference ver a dereference version of this value here. And this is definitely something that you will have to do more research on. Just research T actor iterator. This is the best way to iterate over something over a bunch of actors in your level. You can use um, the original way that they did it was use gameplay statics and they use get all actors of class. And then you pass in the world. Um, then you pass in the type of class that you want. And that's our A spawner, you know, our A battery spawner base. And then we would give it a, a temporary array to put that array into. Uh, but since, since we are basically learning C++, this is a blueprint, mainly a blueprint function here. And basically, if you go to it, all it does is it does the same thing here. It does this T actor iterator right here, but you see it has more code, so it has to do more operations. But this is the exact code that we are writing right here. We're skipping, we're skipping the um, the middleman here, the wrapper. So go ahead and delete this. That's all that get actors of that get all actors of class is doing is iterating just how we are right here. So let's go ahead and uh, take our spawn or our active spawners in the level. And let's add a dereference version of this value here. And this will fill our uh, this will fill our array with however many references to this actor we find in the level. So with that being done, we're actually going to stop the video here because the next steps we have to add a few more lines of code, uh, a few more functions. Uh, we need to add a handle state switch uh, and th that will just make this video last 30 minutes and I want to avoid that. So if you're ready for the next step, go ahead and join me in the next video where we continue on building on this code here. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.